We're starting with Malachi Black, who was released by WWE in June 2021 after a disappointing stint on the main roster. He subsequently joined AEW, where he finally got the opportunity to showcase his true potential. Now a standout on AEW television, Black specifically requested to appear on AEW Collision. As part of the House of Black, alongside Brody King and Buddy Matthews, he has found some success under Tony Khan's leadership. However, some fans still believe that Black hasn't fully lived up to his potential in AEW. Nonetheless, there has been some recent changes in his situation. Since its debut episode last month, the House of Black has become a regular fixture on AEW Collision, with no appearances on Dynamite since then. While speaking on the Undisputed podcast with Bobby Fish, Black revealed that he requested to be put strictly on AEW Collision going forward, and no other show. I requested to be strictly on Collision. I don't want people to get the pick. Saturday night, I get to see House of Black. If I give you the option for Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, you're gonna go, it doesn't really matter, I'll tune in whenever, they'll be there. I don't want to lose the polish. The House of Black are the reigning AEW Trios champions, and have been booked well so far as the champions. While Matthews and King have competed in the ring, Black still hasn't on AEW Collision. We'll have to see when that'll happen, as Black will likely face off against Andrade El Idolo soon. What's your view on this story? Are you glad Malachi Black is on AEW Collision? Let us know in the comments. Now, New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong wrapped up their Independence Day events in Tokyo on July 5th with some jaw-dropping title changes. In the semi-main event, Eddie Kingston shocked the crowd by defeating Kenta to claim the NJPW Strong Openweight Championship. This victory not only adds to Kingston's impressive title history on the indie scene, but also marks his first championship win since 2019 when he held the Crown of Glory Championship in Glory Pro. It's a dream come true for Kingston to capture gold in the renowned Corican Hall. It's worth noting that Kingston, who is signed with AEW, has been making waves in Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Before undergoing hernia surgery, he even challenged Claudio Castagnoli for the ROH World Championship in the main event of ROH Supercard of Honor. The 41-year-old recently made a triumphant return to action, aligning himself with the Elite in their epic clashes against the Blackpool Combat Club. It's interesting to mention that Kingston remains undefeated in his NJPW matches in 2023 so far. Damian Priest made a major statement by securing the briefcase at Money in the Bank 2023, putting the World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins on high alert. It's a far cry from his role at Money in the Bank 2014, where he had a blink and you'll miss it appearance. Back then, in a backstage segment with Stephanie McMahon and the Bella Twins, Stephanie aimed to have Brie Bella escorted out of the building by security. Among the forgettable trio of men who showed up was Damian Priest. His presence had little impact on the WWE scene at the time. Little did anyone suspect that Priest would embark on an impressive journey, rising through the ranks in his WWE career. Logan Paul's entry into WWE came as a massive surprise, with his impressive athleticism quickly making him a hot topic in the company. Despite being occupied as a WWE superstar, Paul has openly expressed his desire to step into the UFC octagon. Now it seems that Paul is willing to participate in an intriguing UFC event. I'm curious if Elon Musk and Zuck are fighting because that's what I'm interested in. I'll be honest, I pitched it internally. If Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg fight, I'll do my UFC debut on the undercard for free. I'll fight for free for charity. Logan Paul previously revealed his ambitious goals as well. For the time being, Logan Paul is currently feuding with Ricochet on WWE television. We'll have to wait and see whether Logan Paul will make his debut in the UFC one day. What's your view on what Logan Paul said? Do you want to see him compete in the UFC? Let us know in the comments. Now, Roman Reigns has been quite unfortunate in recent weeks. Not only has he been betrayed by his own family, but he was also pinned for the first time in 1,294 days this past week. Now, to add to his misery, Wrestling News reports that his official TikTok account has also been banned. While the reason for the ban is not known, they speculated that TikTok's strong anti-violence policy might have been violated by something that was posted on his account. That is a possibility, and the situation will probably be rectified by WWE before too long. John Cena made a shocking return to WWE during Money in the Bank and announced that he wanted to bring WrestleMania to London. This was interrupted by Grayson Waller, who wanted WrestleMania to take place in Australia instead. 
The segment ended with the 16-time world champion nailing the Australian star with an attitude adjustment as Cena stood tall. It was a very well-received segment for numerous reasons. While speaking on the Jim Cornette experience, the wrestling veteran criticized Grayson Waller for playing a heel instead of being one. Cornette then blasted Waller for being fake in the segment. He's playing a heel. Either they're telling him to do this, or this is the kind of stuff he wants to do, but it's totally fake because it's obvious that he's trying to be a heel on purpose because Grayson Waller would not talk to John Cena like he was a jobber. It's see-through that he's getting heat in quotation marks on purpose when he offers to help Cena by making him go viral and save his career. It works if two guys are on the same level or if John was the main event guy from 15 years ago and this is the main event guy now. It's a nobody here telling a movie star off. It was even worse than the thing that they did with Theory because Theory at least had been on television and gotten a number of wins and was being pushed and Theory ended up beating Cena in a match. Grayson Waller is also ready to make an in-ring return soon after injury. We'll have to wait and see how WWE will continue to book Grayson Waller on Friday Night SmackDown in the coming weeks. Carlito Caribbean Cool joined Vince McMahon's company back in 2003 and made his main roster debut in 2004 when he defeated John Cena for the United States Championship in what was certainly a shocking move. During his time in WWE, Carlito held the Intercontinental Championship, the United States title, the WWE Tag Team Championship, and the World Tag Team title. He was ultimately released in May of 2010. While speaking with the Attitude Era podcast, Carlito confirmed that he requested to leave the company three times, but Vince McMahon convinced him to stay with the company in the end. Yeah, I requested to leave three times. No, it just shows you why Vince is a genius. You go in there with the mindset, yeah, I'll get out of here or whatever, and then you leave, you know, you just, you know, everything they're doing is wrong, everything I'm saying is right, you know, they'd sell you this thing, and then as soon as you walk out of the office and close the door, you're like, oh, wait a minute, oh man, they got me. Yeah, you're going to some kind of mental twilight zone, you know what I mean? I mean, this shows you what a genius Vince McMahon is. WWE recently signed Carlito for a two-year deal, and according to a report by PW Insider, WWE is currently targeting the July 7th SmackDown from Madison Square Garden in New York City as the venue for Carlito's official return to the company. Diamante has been with L Elite Wrestling for three years now since her debut in January 2020. She's faced top talents from AEW's roster and even won the inaugural AEW Women's Tag Team Cup with Eva Elise. She earned each of these accolades with only a part-time deal, but now the deal has changed. Fortunately for her, things have now taken a turn as her contract has been updated. According to Fightful Select, Diamante has been bumped up from the Tier 0 deal she was on previously to a full-time contract. Previously, while she was still signed to some kind of agreement, it wasn't the all-elite graphic level deal that many of the performers we see on TV are on. Though she hasn't been appearing on Dynamite, Rampage, or Collision much lately, Diamante has become a fixture of Ring of Honor's women's division after AEW's YouTube programming was discontinued. The Miami native has won five of her seven matches on Honor Club this year, which includes hard-fought victories over Trisha Dora and Layla Gray. Prior to arriving in ROH, she also reigned as the champion of Queens of Combat and IWC before making her mark in Impact, NWA, and Women of Wrestling. Diamante earned even more gold when she captured the WOW Tag Team Championships in 2022 under the name Adrenaline, paired with Fire, better known as Kiara Hogan.